don't know. You're looking live at the Senate Judiciary Committee hearing room where Senator Blumenthal from Connecticut, Democrat, is questioning the Supreme Court nominee, Judge Neil Gorsuch. Let's just listen and for a bit. The parties never asked for that on bond hearing. Let me ask you, what was the exceptional importance of this case that prompted you to seek a rehearing en banc? I appreciate the opportunity to answer that question, Senator. Uh, en banc rehearings uh, happen sua sponte with regularity in our court. As I say, maybe 20 percent estimate of the cases uh, that we've heard during my time have been sua sponte. It's, it's uh, acknowledged in, in the uh, committee reports to the rules. Wright and Miller, the Bible on uh, civil procedure uh, that every young lawyer lives with, acknowledges the regularity and the propriety of sua sponte en banc. So just to put that aside, I just don't see any. any I'm asking any, you about your reason. And, now and, and by the way, I know you don't have a number, but maybe you can supply it because oh. I'm willing to bet that that number is a tiny, minute fraction oh. of the 2,700 cases. Of course. And even of all of the cases where you have dissented. Of course. I'd be very reluctant to, to reveal internal deliberative processes any further, Senator of a court, and I don't think you want us to, but I've gone pretty darn far here, and I'd be happy to consider any reasonable request that we, we can talk about that. By but the way, the judge who uh, dissented from the panel opinion was Judge Bacharach, correct? Yes. He voted against the rehearing on bank, didn't he? He wrote a special concurrence saying that he thought the panel decision was gravely wrong. But there was no exceptional reason for a rehearing on that. He decided not to vote for Ombank. That's correct. But he thought the panel opinion was gravely wrong. Okay. So there have been many exchanges where they throw around a bunch of legal terms. Ombank is when the entire court takes up the appellate procedure. Sua sponte is an action that is not prompted by a formal request, that the court takes it up automatically, if you will. We've been having to interpret some of the language throughout the day. Uh, but this, this gives you a better sense of some of the back and forth today. Every law that this body passes, I take seriously. I respect this body. And nobody is above the law in this country, and that includes the President of the United States. In that interview, did he ever ask you to overrule Roe v. Wade? No, Senator. What would he have done if he had if he'd asked? Senator, I would have walked out the door. It would be a violation of the separation of powers and judicial independence if someone sitting at this table in order to get confirmed, had to make promises or commitments about how they'd rule in a case that's currently pending and likely to make its way to the Supreme Court. There's no such thing as a Republican judge or a Democratic judge. We just have judges in this country. This has been a marathon hearing. They often are, but this one is really long. Let's bring in our panel, Editor-in-Chief of Life Zet, Laura Ingram, Mar Lyson, National Political Correspondent of National Public Radio, and Syndicated Columnist Charles Krauthammer. Okay, 49 years old, uh, from Denver, Colorado. He'd be the youngest Supreme Court Justice. Laura, how do you think he's doing today? I don't see how he could have done much better. Uh, the, the big hot-button issues that people focused on today, question on Roe versus Wade, uh, and he answered, uh, you know, that it's precedent, and he would they would consider it as precedent. He, as most nominees before the Senate panel, will not get into his personal views on issues. You heard him say he'd walk out. It was a little dramatic, but nevertheless, I think that would probably uh, assuage the concerns of some on the left about him. Interestingly, about the same-sex marriage case, he was more definitive, where he said. It's absolutely settled law, which is interesting because precedent is precedent. Yet on that issue, which is also where Donald Trump seems to be, that's that's absolutely settled law. So that was uh, that was a bit curious, but I think he he comes across as a, a man is very poised, very learned. It's always fun for someone um, uh, who has any legal background to watch someone like an Al Franken <laughs> try to go toe to toe with Gorsuch on constitutional law and. He's picking up little pamphlets and reading them to Judge Gorsuch. Uh, that was kind of a match that was, uh, was not going to go well for Franken from the beginning. But I, I think he's done great. This has been a marathon hearing. and It'll be more questioning tomorrow. This is going to 9 o'clock tonight. And uh, I don't see how we could have done much better, frankly. Mark? Yeah, I do think there was a contrast between the absolute settled law of gay marriage and the, yes, 
I'll admit that abortion, yeah. Roe versus Wade, has been confirmed many times. Right. So there was a big difference there. But he did what other nominees have done before him, which is work really, really hard not to get pinned down and be specific on almost anything. And I think for the Democrats, they went into this with a weak hand, kind of couldn't really figure out how they were going to stop him or if they could. I think they come out of today, day one, with the same situation. They now have to decide how do they want to lose. Do they want to lose with a filibuster or not? Here is the Senate Minority Leader and the Senate Majority Leader on this vote that will come up eventually. I don't think a single one of our senators has endorsed uh, Judge Gorsuch. I think he's made a very poor impression on, the, on most many of our members in his refusal to answer questions. If uh, they don't find uh, Gorsuch acceptable, is, are they taking the position that the vacancy should never be filled at all? So, Charles? Refusal to answer questions? No Supreme Court nominee answers questions who has any hope of getting on the court. The whole idea is not just to be calm and collected and knowledgeable, but to be nimble. This is an exercise in obfuscation. You've got to go nine hours, perhaps 11 hours, you break the <coughs> Hillary's Benghazi indoor record, uh, where you basically say nothing and you give nothing away. Uh, and he did that beautifully. Uh, when Democrats complain about not uh, taking stands, you go back to Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who made it a principle of her nominating process that she would not in any way telegraph where she would stand on anything. Look, ever since the Bork nomination and the fiasco of the attacks on him, it's understood your job up there is to dance, to express a fealty to the Constitution, to say you will be independent, and that's it. And he did that beautifully. Uh, there was only one flash of a, a little bit of anger, I think, in, a, in exchange with Durbin, uh, Senator Durbin, about uh, LBGT and, and what a professor he's he was tied to uh, believed and what he believed. He just moments ago, Laura, said that he was he found uh, President Trump's uh, talk and uh, actions, speaking about the judiciary, uh, attacking them. Uh, disheartening and demoralizing. Uh, interesting he says that. One of the questions is independence from President Trump and the ability to, to adjudicate cases that come up against him. Yeah, I, that's what he was quoted as having said behind closed doors in meetings with various senators. I'll just say, and listening to what uh, uh, Schumer said, that we don't have any Democrats who would support him, it, it begs the question of which a lot of conservatives had at the very beginning, not that they don't like Gorsuch, that if the Democrats are going to go to the wall on this, then, then you might have gone for someone who is a little bit more of a sure bet as a conservative in this first go-round. And, and you, you know, Judge Pryor, obviously Tom Hardiman, uh, Steve Colleton, others. Uh, and instead they went with uh, Gorsuch, who is, you know, you, know, you can see him. He's, he's, sm he's polished, he's smooth. Um, and well, he doesn't have a case record on abortion. Yeah, and, he's, and, he, and he, could he be an evolving justice when he gets into uh, the court and evolve like uh, some of the uh, previous uh, Republican nominees have done? I hope not, but uh, they're going to go to the wall on Gorsuch, then, hey. Yeah. Who are they not going to go but, to? Yeah, wall? exactly. But the Heritage Foundation and the Federalist Society do not think he's going to turn out like Sue. Better not. I mean, they feel very confident that he's not. Better not. not. Yeah, okay. They, 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 but, they said the same thing yeah. about some other justices. I want to do a quick round on where we think we are on health care. I mean, we put up this leaning no, no in the House uh, at about 31. Uh, maybe those are changing, maybe they're not. But Mara, do you have a sense of where, I mean, that's where this what everybody's been of... trying to figure out. They can afford to lose a big number, a big bunch of those ones 21. you just put up, 21. That gives them some pad if they can get it. I think they feel by scheduling this, by having it be, you want to repeal Obamacare or not, you want to undermine your new president or not, they probably will muscle this and through. President Trump up on the Hill, Charles saying, I honestly think many of you will lose your seats in 2018 if you don't get this done. Well, he's got, he's weaponized Twitter. And he said, essentially, you better come aboard. He did it with a smile. He did it with a joke. I think he means it. There are people here who don't want to be primaried, and they might be. But I, uh, look, uh, these bills always end up as 11th hour. Um, you know, people have their heart in their mouth. This happened with Obamacare itself. This happened with the Clinton tax hike. 
in the early 1990s. Last minute, you win by one vote. It's hard to believe that they're going to allow this to go down for two or three votes. In the, in the old days, you'd give them, a, there'd be a lot of post offices that would be uh, established <laughs> at the last minute. You can't do that now. But there are other ways of smoothing the board. Mm -hmm. You know, Laura, I talk to conservatives, and I know you talk to yeah. them every day, um, and it just is this overwhelming rip up the thing from its roots, and they don't feel like this bill does it. And does President Trump putting the heat on yeah. change the dynamic? Right now, they don't have the votes. Um, I just got off the phone with uh, one of the members of the Freedom Caucus. He said, he said 33 no's. And I don't know what the configuration is, Republicans, Democrats. They don't have the votes, and I think Paul Ryan is not in a position right now where he really wants to do negotiating on the core issues of the mandates. Those mandates mandate types of services, mandate uh, under 26. They don't want to negotiate that. I think the groundwork should have been laid a lot more clearly early on with what the president wanted in this bill and not perhaps farmed it out to Paul Ryan to the extent they did. Not that he's, Paul Ryan's bad, but I think they could have done a much better job getting everyone on board earlier. Are conservatives scared about Donald Trump coming after them? If they vote no, they're not. They're not budging on the Freedom Caucus. That's the word I just got before we came on the air. They're not budging and they're not afraid. And there are not, or there are signals from the Senate. Tom Cotton, I mentioned, yeah. Ted Cruz, Rand Paul, Mike Lee, Mike tweeting Lee. out today that he is not accepting this bill as it currently sits in the Senate. They can only lose two over there. And then you got Susan but Collins, who has different objections. That's what makes the Freedom Caucus resistant. So ironic. What they're going to get back from the Senate, assuming it goes to the Senate, is going to be unrecognizable. So why don't you pass this, get it to the Senate, and end up in, uh, in conference, conference committee, and then find out what you can get.